this sport is just it's bonkers it is bonkers to me all of this i'm sorry i know i know i know i'm sorry that i'm late to the news i'm sorry i pride myself on being one that's early to the news but listen i fell asleep nice and early last night thought i'd get some nice long sleep thinking nothing in the world could happen despite the fact that yes i knew i knew carlos correa failed his physical i knew there was a slight chance i didn't think it was gonna happen this quickly i didn't think it was gonna happen at all possibly but the new york mets have signed carlos correa and here we are what <laughs> i find it so stupid this sport is just it's beautiful it's a beautiful sport isn't it um wow so at about 2 30 last night the sauce boss drops breaking carlos correa and the mets have a deal 315 million 12 years i don't know if he was actually first but that's just the tweet that i saw or the tweet that i went to just now but where do i even just start where do i start so uh how about we start with where are the haters at right now i'd love to hear from you guys because i was told that there was no way that the mets were gonna sign carlos correa especially after he fails physical i'll oh, play the world's smallest violin for those guys because they said that there was no way on planet earth that this was about the mets possibly getting carlos correa it couldn't possibly be and Oh, the hate, the hate from all the haters that said there's no way he, anyone wants to go to the Mets. Nobody wants to go to that loser franchise. There's just all this garbage, and Steve Cohen won't actually spend that much money. He'll spend money, but not that much. Where are all these haters at right now? Because I'd love to hear from you guys. Would love to. Because it's very silent on that front. Very silent on that front. And for the Giant fans that... I actually feel bad for because I do feel bad Giants fans I do because we were in your shoes not too long ago when it came to the Bauer incident right we were told that Trevor Bauer had to deal with the Mets granted you know kind of glad that we didn't end up having him but regardless at the in the moment right Trevor Bauer signs with the Mets we're all happy and then an hour later or so oh nope he's not actually going to the Mets there's no full evidence to that and then he ends up signing with the dodgers i think it was the same day or the next day whatever it was but we feel your pain i know though that happened twice to you guys this offseason i mean with judge that's a big one and then carlos correa now i i do feel for you giants fans because i've been in those shoes before us met fans have so we could we could stay at peace here we can stay at peace but for the giant fans that were being absolute garbage on twitter about all that nonsense then uh, i don't feel sorry for you but i don't feel sorry for anyone right now because carlos correa is a new york met and he's going to be playing third base the mets have two top five shortstops they have two top five shortstops and if you don't think that one of them are top five you could certainly you can't say that they're worse than top 10 because when Doran Correa are easily two top 10 shortstops in the game easily and wow uh the Mets needed to add a bat and they just did it easily easily and this was the top I I, I should say the top because technically if you want to go for arguments Aaron Judge Trey Turner but in that next tier this was the guy this was the guy out of the Koreas, out of the swansons of the world out of guys like that this was the guy so carl's correa last year at the twins if you want numbers hit 22 home runs hit with a 291 batting average 366 on base 467 sogging and an 834 ops ops plus of 140 he didn't steal a base last year, which is interesting because he stole a lot of bases early on in his career, but he had 152 hits as well and had 64 RBIs. Year before that in Houston in 2021, was an all-star fish, fifth in MVP, and won the gold glove for shortstop, so he has a nice glove. Uh, well, granted, the, the gold glove competition, I should say, is more of a more of a popularity contest if i'm being honest there but i will see how his defense actually is as i am doing this on the fly here so we're gonna pull up and yeah i mean 
His, his defense was kind of bad, actually, last year. His OAA was in the 18th percentile. But 2021, it was in the 97th percentile. So you know what? That Gold Glove does have uh, logistics to back it up. But in that year, in 2021, hit 279, had a 366 on base, 485 slugging, 850 OPS, a 131 OPS plus, 26 home runs, 92 RBIs, 155 hits in 148 games. So, I mean, you're getting a guy who is just purely one of the best hitters in the sport. That's just what you're getting. And I know, I know that there are times where he's going to get into a slump and we're going to absolutely hate his guts and we're going to boo him. But <laughs> this is why people are going to say Met fans don't deserve a guy like Carlos Correa. But it's going to happen. Realistically, we're, it's going to happen, right? He's going to get into a slump and then Met fans are going to boo him. We know it's going to happen. But when he's not in a slump, which is more times than not, back with the numbers backing that up. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. This is going to be fun. So I don't, I can't even like picture how the lineup's gonna go right now. So Nimo, Marte, Lindor, Alonso, Correa, maybe McNeil, or maybe they want to go Vogel back. Then they want to go McNeil. You, those two are probably interchangeable. And then you have... And then I guess you have <laughs> Kana, which is just ridiculous, hitting eighth. And then ninth, you have Narvaez or Tomas Nito, depending who's catching on that day. Wow. That's deep. That, that lineup just... Oh, my God. That lineup is a, way better. Way better. You have so many different combinations you could go with here. If you wanted to go even different here and you wanted to extend the lineup a bit, I think that's the best way to maximize the lineup. But hypothetically, if you want to go, you could go probably Nimmo and then you could go Correa, Lindor, Alonso. Then you go, uh, you go Marte maybe, or you go McNeil. Then you go Marte. Then you go with Vogelback. Then Canna. And then you go with whoever's catching on the day. You have a lot of different combinations you could go with when it comes to this lineup now. And I'm interested to see how they develop this lineup throughout the season. Because this is going to be very... This is going to be very interesting. Also wanted to mention last season he had a 5.4 war. Forgot to mention that as well. So... Yeah, not not a bad player. Not a bad player. And also, I don't know if I mentioned the contract details, but 12 years, uh, $315 million. Who cares? Not your money. Not my money. I don't care. So, I really don't. I really don't. And just looking at Savant Page, all of this red is so beautiful, except for sprint speed and OAA last year. But if we can get the 2021 version where it's all in the red, except for sprint speed there, that were then we're uh then we're cooking. But either way, I'm I'm pumped either way. I'm pumped either way. Him and Lindor. Him and Lindor on the left side of that infield. Enough to make a grown man cry. So also gotta talk Brett Beatty because now that's gonna be interesting what's gonna happen there I'd imagine Brett Beatty's gonna be spending time in left field next year or if you really want to go crazy you can maybe play him at second base at times you could play Jeff McNeil in the outfield you could play Brett Beatty at third maybe Correa could play some second base McNeil goes in the outfield say they want to give Canna some days off or maybe you could go with I don't know. Maybe you could go with Beatty over at third base and you just play Correa at short and then you have Lindor DH or you have Lindor at short, uh, Correa DHing and then Beatty at third. You have a lot of different combinations you can go with here. That's presuming Brett Beatty ends up staying on the roster because it's going to be interesting. They're not going to carry all of Guillaume, Beatty, Escobar, Correa on the roster. I'd imagine this means Escobar's traded. Like, there's no way Eduardo Escobar stays on the roster now, right? Because how? How do you keep him around after this? Unless he's gone after spring training because they really want to see how Beatty does before they make that decision. 
Because now if you have Eduardo Escobar on the bench, which he might even DH at times, which just makes the lineup ridiculous. But I don't see a world where Eduardo Escobar stays now, right? Because he's taking up a lot of money on the payroll for a guy who's not going to play every day. So what's the point of keeping a guy like that around? I don't know. Unless they imagine him playing second base and then McNeil playing in the outfield more than Canna. I don't know. I don't know which way they're going to go with this, but there's definitely moves to still be made. Liam Hendricks has been connected to the Mets, which is just ridiculous, which also will mention and throw it in there because I didn't talk about it in any other video. The Mets signed Adam Ottavino as well to a two-year deal with a opt-out after the first year for Ottavino. I think it was $15 million total, that deal. So not a bad deal at all there. You get the guy who pitched in eighth innings for you, and now you have a deadly just duo there of eighth inning pitchers and you still might add Liam Hendricks because those rumors were coming out still afterwards. So you have some creative ways you could go about this, right? You have Adam Ottavino back there. You have Rayleigh still back there as well. Robertson, you have a lot of different guys that could pitch the eighth inning, even the ninth inning at times. And Ottavino, we know he had a great year last year, had a sub three ERA, right? Might have even been sub two. If I'm not mistaken, it was just above two, which I'll quickly pull up the numbers again, doing this on the fly. We don't edit here. So, yeah, he had a just above two at a 2.06. So, not bad. And his whip was below a one, which, again, for a guy who has walk problems, definitely eye opening to see that he was able to do that. Let's see if he can replicate that. That's what's going to be interesting to see if he could end up controlling the walks a bit more, even if he could control it a bit. We're not complaining here. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for what I have for you guys. I'm. To the moon, uh, Carlos Correa, <laughs> you're not watching this, but welcome to Queens. And yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Remember to leave a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload a video next. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go Mets.